like my corners. My corners are safe, my corners are nice. Anyway, we have a random map, 7 versus 7. We you folks next. And the ratings are ranging all the way from a high on up 2,000 for Tursto. Rocking down to the lowest, I think is 1,200. There's a Kazuku, a Commander Striker, and Banana Smoothie, all at the 1,200 mark. So Joe's with a couple of sprinkler pros running in. And let's see how these guys are going to get on. I'm just going to slow this down a wee bit for the introductions. The map is randomly generated. There is water, but you don't really want to do navy on that. And there's no reclaim. When I say no, there's 3,715 reclaims. So it's all going to be about the mixes. Entries. And some little extra bits around there. Okay, let's have an introduction. We have team one on the left hand side. We have team two on the right hand side. Let's say good name. First up here on the bottom for team number one in the combat green, it is Teristo. And Teristo is here, he is Seraphim, he's got his first hand opening up with some mixes. Above him in the burgundy color, it is a Mr. MSG. Delicious MSG, I like MSG, tasty. Anyway, he's Seraphim and he's working his way towards some eco there. Above MSG in the bright pink color, it is Banana Smoothie. Banana smoothie is seraphim as well, so we're having a bit of a heavy seraphim day at the moment. That's one, two, three seraphim so far. Anyway, he's pink, he's got his factory up and engineer going for hydro. Up from him, and yay, it's not a seraphim, it is Ute. And uh, Ute is here in white cybrin. <coughs> Excuse me, drink coming back up. Charming. Uh, anyway, so he's cybrin, white, he's getting work on his hydro. Uh, close to him is UEF and blue comrade striker. And Comrade Striker is working around his Hydro as well. A nice blue color there. Above Comrade Striker, it is another Seraphim. It is totally not a robot. He's totally not a robot, folks. But he is a Lavender and he is working on his Hydro. In front of Totally Not a Robot, finally for team number two, another Seraphim. It is Derp. Derp is orange. Derp is working on his Hydro. So we have a very heavy Seraphim side there. Five Seraphim, one Cybran, and one New Year for team number one. Let's see if that's going to help them out or not. Introductions for team number two. First here at the top section, it's another Seraphim. It is E3. We've seen him before because I've refused to say that name. Anyway, he is in Cyan. He's Seraphim working on his Hydro as well. Down from him in the red color, the first Aeon of the game on team number two. It is Sirt Trullin. I'm just going to call him Sirt from here on out. He's a nice red color as mentioned and working on his Hydro as most of them will be. And down from him in the purple color, another Seraphim. How many Seraphims are in this game? It is Kaizuku. Kaizuku is walking away towards the front as we speak. And then down from him once more, we have the second down. It's Lufuk. Luf Zero Q. Just going to call him Lu. Anyway, he's Aeon. He's in light blue. And further down from him, yet another Seraphim. Yeah, I know. A, a lot of the same people play, but that's all right, Rice Fox. It's fine. But another Seraphim, just in the standard green color, it's Zwaffle Noob. Zwaffle Noob is here working on some more regions. Further on from Zwaffle Noob, this is another Aeon player. It is Seastar. And uh, Seastar is yellow. Working on some regions, looking to probably get into air. And finally, for team number two here at the front, it is yet another Seraphim. Big gods. Hail Pink. Welcome, Mr. Zorgan. All right, I'm just going to, uh, like, remember we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Seraphim out of 14 players. That is fully two thirds of these players are Seraphim. What gives? Then we have one, two, three Aeon. In fact, team two is all Seraphim and Aeon. I just noticed nothing but Seraphim and Aeon for team number two. A huge amounts of Seraphim, one Cybran and one UEF. So we do have all the races represented in this game, but by uh, tiny margins. One Seraphim, one Cybran, three Aeon and nine Seraphims. Bloody hell. Anyway, we'll speed this back up. We've had our introductions and we've just been astounded. I'm hoping they're all random because that makes more sense if they're just all random players. But um, yeah, that's how it is. Okay, these top and bottom ponds, now they don't have any cliffs on them. So if you have some floating hover units, you can easily traverse them. So like a Seraphim Zooey's or Aeon Aurora's, they can very much just wander over these and it cause a bit of extra hassle. But uh, first little pushes going on in places and we do have a scout 
along with a flare coming on in and there's a poor little engineer all by his lonesome no support at all whatsoever he's going to reclaim a rock but that's about all he's going to get to do because that flare is going to introduce himself with a few shots and this engineer is going to have a bad time zap 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 there we go kill with that play 51 damage and uh Overhead flies a scout. They don't want to carry on forwards though because this is a commander. And if they go towards Derp, they're going to be doomed. And they're going towards Derp, they're going to be doomed. That's exactly what's going to happen. Oh, no. Blair hangs a wee bit of Louis, turns away. And, uh, well, Spirit's going to have a bad time. I don't imagine a Spirit can actually kill a commander on its own like the region on the commander. Pretty sure outdoes the DPS of a scout. Actually, having said that, I'm sure I've seen some maps where it was nothing but scouts could be built, and it was basically two guys having to go at each other. Nothing but scouts. They were the only combat units that had no transports, no air, no nothing, just scouts, and it was absolute madness. Now, I am hearing there was a Seraphim scout, but it's been killed by this player who has two kills to his name now, just kind of like wandering around and making news of himself there has been a drop up here I want to grab up this top plateau and throw down a radar I need some extra intel to display in the area uh, radar and that looks like another radar perhaps that's right comrade spike says Sir Trellin so I'm guessing during the game Mr. Comrade Striker was lagging a wee bit but he's still here I ain't lagging on the replay so we're good to go first upgrade of the day happening out and it is going down for MSG getting that gun upgrade on his commander he's doing that on 23 mass income and looks like 300 energy income not a bad shout and he's getting a reclaim from engineers to assist on that any moment now I'm sure they'll come over and assist to get that completed I'm hearing a bomber I'm seeing a bomber Who's down here? It is a shimmer out from Seastar. Looking to get some kills on some engineers. Who's off a radar? Radar's well worth it. Why not? I'm also hearing. No. It's like you're shooting at a uh, random inti that's flying overhead. And down this direction, we have engineers under threat from a Sam and a scout. They're going to have a bad time. As the bomber switches on back, and really, he wants to go for the engineers. Don't go for the command. You're not going to do enough damage. And. Yeah, you definitely want to go for the engineers. Absolutely right. Right, down this direction, there is a defending sound in this direction, but with the addition of the... Oh, no. Oh, that's not going to happen. The Sam decides to walk away and get some more engineers. Skirt around the edges of that. It keeps going this way. Can kill off a radar. Turn back around and face into a commander. Not a good plan. But dead Sam, anyway. Warp fighting. This is a push coming through the mid from Ute. He sent a few raiding units to go through this way. Tier 2 is going down for Sutralin. He's probably going to want that if he's going to face up against gun comms because they're now that MSG's finished his gun is going down for Banana Smoothie. It's going to be a pair of zero from gun commanders. They're going to be a bit difficult to oust on your own. Up this direction we see Derp is working around Comrade Striker who's getting a T2 upgrade so he's going to defend him so he can just stay where he is and get that completed. T2 also going down for E3, but it's going to take a lot longer without any kind of assistance compared to what is going on for Mr. Striker over there. T2 also going down for Sir Trallon. Looks like it should complete pretty darn quickly. All right, gun upgrade is on the way for Zwaffle as well. He's getting close to completing that one, 85% of the way through, but his teammate nearby, Mr. Zorgan, does not have guns, so it's going to be a wee bit uneven. His first gun upgrade for the Fook. And after that, it's going to go straight into the damage or speed upgrade, I would say, would be next. There we go. Just sticking, sticking with a single upgrade. That's unusual. Has a friendly Kazuku near him as well, though. So plenty of commanders on the front. And all these guys are getting ready to rumble. First serious bit of action looks like it's going to come on here. It's going to see MSG push up against all these stamps. Does he have radar? The answer is yes, he does have radar. And these guys go, nope, we don't want any of that. That's got to be a commander. They do move back. Do they know it's commander? No, they don't. That was just coincidence. The timing on that fallback. Well, maybe with this who overhead wall hand and they realized just exactly what was lying in store. Okay. 
So we mentioned about those floaty things going past, but there we go, there's a few zooies into the water, and there's a drop coming in from E3, plunging itself down onto this plateau, and now these guys can get work done down here. There is a T1 PD which is going to cause an issue, radar, no anti-air going up, and this RT needs to focus down on T1 PD there, the Thams are rolling on in, they need to kill off these guys before that kills his own T1 AA, but coming on up to support is totally not a robot. Guys, he's totally not a robot. I don't know what you're talking about. He's going to easily mop up the rest of these horses and keep things alive. In this direction, the Zooies have angled on down now. They're coming out of the water. They're going to kill some things over there. Uh, give a quick check down the bottom, and another couple of Zooies have been to have just come on over. And they've just caused a nuisance of themselves. They killed off a mass extractor, and now they're killing off the factory. And with Tursto in the region with this commander, it's going to need more than just units to slow those down. Gun speed is on the way for Lefouk. Needs to try and get that sorted compared to what is coming their way. At the moment, Kaizuki is doing a lot of pressure from this commander. You see Banana Speed is moving on up. He has the gun upgraded and gun is on the way for Mr. Zorgan as well. He cannot face up against that without some kind of support. There's all just going on here now. There's one, two, three, four, five, six commanders in the region. He really wants that gun upgrade. He's looking healthy, Zwaffle Noob's looking healthy, Banana Smoothie's looking healthy, so is Kaizuku, and so is Lefouk. The only one who's actually damaged is Mr. Zorgan, and down here we can see that Tursto is in position to get a bit of extra reclaim from there. Checking up on the top section, and still some Zooey's loitering around in the water. Gun upgrade is on the way for E3, there's a totally not a robot standing in front of him. If you, can you not see him? Oh. What? I'm so confused. I thought for sure his commander was shooting that. Maybe he didn't actually have the radar at the time, but he pushes him, makes a distraction, and this leads to his coming from behind and kill off this mass extractor yet again. A3 desperately trying to get the gun upgrade on his commander. He's so close. He really needs to finish out looking pretty closely. Oh, he's going to get out. Gun upgrade is done. He can now start lobbing some damage down, but there's two commanders in his face. It is Derp and Totally Not a Robot. Having a go at E3, and he needs to get out of dodge right about now. And indeed, he's making a break for the water. Going to get under there and try to survive. He is two versus one at the top. Desperately needs some help to keep on going down here, though. It is MSG in trouble. He does have gun combat. He's now facing off against a. Don't two comms. He has a friendly one with him. So banana smoothies in the region. But now in comes some Waffle Noob. It is a two versus three in the mid here. Versus four, even. Because Zorgan has finished his gun comm upgrade and he is pushing up as well. Some units have been sacrificed for the greater good. They are keeping the commanders alive by keeping them at distance. And it gives these guys a chance to actually get away. MSG is not looking healthy. Not looking healthy at all. It's not good without the top section. The exact same thing is going on here. We see E3 is out number 2 to 1 and he's not looking healthy at all either. He is well under half health. And he will soon drop into the red if he does not get his buttocks into the water. He cannot toe-to-toe -to -toe with Totally Not Robot who has both a veneracy rank over him and a lot more health. And into the water he goes, gets under there and will be safe. For now. Safe for now, but let's leave these guys ready to simply roll on up and cause some issues. Plenty of units, but they are gun comms. So they've got to be a bit careful with the Aurora range. Checking up down here, and T2 on the way for MSG decides he needs to do something else to try and stop that, which he kind of does. This is one, two, three gun comms on the rampage. Four. They are just simply going for it. Simply, absolutely going for it, and that is going to be a problem. And that's a bad spot to upgrade for MSG. He is just a few seconds off completing it, and then he's going to run like a bitch. But the problem is, he's going to get caught on Eunice, and those are going to delay him. Although, having said that, it is now Mr. Zorgan who pulls back the wee bit. That's not a great idea. That is pointless. It will just die too quickly. MSG has to fall back, and he's got no option with four commanders in his face, plus all these units. No way can he stand where he is. I hear... Gunships, yes I do. So Gunship down here doing some work, killing off some units, plenty of air support with it. And hiding in the water is Tursto. I'm guessing he has some problems with some AA beforehand. Up this direction, these two guys are still stomping around making a nuisance of themselves. 
we see E3 has managed to pop down a T2 point defense, which is great for killing off T1 artillery, especially as it does the whole fire a beam and move to the next target. Is it going to survive though? Plenty of T1 AA in the air still? No, it's not. Just enough to kill it. And that T2 ID needs to be removed. Drop coming in from E3 in an interesting position. Those engineers can land right in front of Comrade Striker. He changes his mind and pulls him back. As you should, but down here it is all about Team 2 pushing on in. Two commands down this way. We have uh, Lefouk and Mr. Zorgan. They are moving down towards the bottom side. Up here it is the Zwaffel Noob and Kaiser Show. It's really moving up on this direction to try and slow things out. Not a good plan. Back here though, it is MSG. He's starting to throw down some T2 point defense, which he absolutely needs to do. He has to get some kind of range to slow these guys down, but that's still four commanders in close proximity. He's not going to have a good time with those. Checking out the top section here, and well, I'll tell you, not a robot is fine. Plenty of health. Uh, derp, not so much. Down under 2,500, having a bad time of it, probably because E3 rebuilt this. This guy wasn't terribly healthy, but he's got support in the form of units, point defense, and he can just duck into the water whenever he likes. Some more tier 1 ID coming over the water, but now there's a gunship in the area that's going to stop those in their tracks. Oh dear. Tursto was trying to hide in the water, but some torpedo bombers out from Seastar have disabused him of that notion, and Seastar's comm has no upgrades. But still has overcharge and Tisto is on the run, has a couple of flakin' nearest command, are gonna need them if that air comes up. But check out what's going on down here. This is MSG. MSG goes down at exactly the same time as Mr. Zorgan. So Zorgan must have been really low on health. Wanted into range of all of this and just got absolutely obliterated. Full share is on. The big guys have decided they need to drop back that death explosion from MSG to the enough damage combined with all of that. And these guys really need to get out of dodge. T2 air is coming on over and Kaiser who's not looking good. Those are Nothers. Ooh, the extra damage there. 1500 health. He needs to get the fuck out of dodge and run. In this direction is now Caesar who's got some problems. But Tursto is in the area with his commander. And Tursto actually control K's out. He decides he's had enough. He's not going to carry on. And well, all that's just going to die. Totally not a robot. What? What was staring at down there? I wonder what he's doing. He moved out of the water once again. I think it was even the really hurt one. But ah, there we go. Wandered in some T2 T2 point defense range, and E3 is now in trouble. There is a whole bunch of T1 bombers overhead, as well as some North fighter bombers. So he's got some air issues. Plenty of attacks going on. We have some black moving in to take care of any. Interceptors that show up, but this is a problem. Dodge for all your worth. He does manage to do a few rounds, and then the air comes in and keeps him by the derp. Underwater sight, he's had enough. And maybe there's some kind of lag going on, I'm not sure, but more control K's and E3 is sitting at 3000 health, but the Nothers are still in range. Still lurching over here, still trying to throw their bombs down. Just can't quite land the hits, and now some swift winds turn up from a Caesar. They are keeping them alive. Look at them just spinning, spinning, spinning. And now there is no air left to do damage to E3. Checking out down here, this is Comrade Striker. Maybe in a bit of trouble. Nah, he'll be fine. He's got plenty of point of A bunch of T1 and T2. Got some shields out. No dramas from that guy. E3 is still in danger though. He is under 3000. But he has plenty of air support. He just stops to build a mass extractor and carries on his merry way. Down the bottom here, this is a literally board base set up by these guys. But they are in range of some T2PD back here from Mr. Mute. And indeed, what else is going on? We see some damaged Kaizuku. He's taking some hits down into some T2 shielding. That's going to help survivability a huge amount. Whereas uh, Zwaffenu pushing up this way into some T2 point defense fire, maybe not the best idea. He's more behind us, so everyone he's taken on this one, he's getting shot by another. Maybe he doesn't want to do that kind of thing. And up this direction, and how's E3 looking? He's looking okay. And we're going to shield gen that will keep him alive for that much longer. Okay, down this direction, it is Comrade Striker working on some flak. He reckons he's going to need it. 
I don't really think he does. And it is Seastar down here, still with an unupgraded commander, but he has the support of some air around him. And he can just move on through and do nasty things to the space, which consists of basically air. Basically nothing but air. Be okay from, but these two guys, it is Wafunu, it is Kaizuku, and they're just simply pushing on board. They do not care. Why hide when you can push? Nano repair on the way for Banana Smoothie or trying to. We still got 30 seconds or so before that's actually going to get completed. What does he need to actually make it work? Well, the answer is that which he does not have. It is mass. It's like he's trying to reclaim some of the mass back here to get that into his coffers, but he desperately needs something. 75% done and a pair of commanders bearing down upon him. Just needs to play for time, really. Doesn't need to throw these units in quite straight away, though. Kaizuku. Ah, he's in the yellow, but he's quite healthy. He's got 12,000 health. So a couple of ranks of literacy there. Is really beneficial to his thing. What's going on down here? A bit of an air fight. Yes, ASF was out for Ute, but I guess taken down by a large number of swift ones. And the nano repair is going to complete for Smoothie, and he's going to look much, much better off now. All right, checking back up the top section, and we see Comrade Striker is well entrenched there. He's still got just a few units with him. Up in this direction, it is E3, who's nice and healthy under a shield. He will be fine as that regenerates his health. Uh, shield going down for Command Striker at the front. Keeping his commander there though, not sure that's a wise idea. And we see a search Ah, oh, he's walked up there. So I thought he dropped his commander up there, but that's just a plateau he can walk into. Okay, this direction it is... That is Lepuk doing that. Where is... There he is. That is uh, Sea Stars Commander. Get us some reclaim. Why not? He's killed everything, might as well grab the mass while he's at it, but this is a large amount of T2PD going up. It would be foolish to walk in range of those, especially if your commander has no upgrades. Uh, the food decides maybe he's not going to do that. Do they know what's there? Well, they do. It's been scouted. What's the range on those? So let's just double check that. Not far off, they get any kind of radar. Or visual. Also, oh, though, Caesar is moving away. Definitely want some radar down there. Right now, some T1 radar, and these guys can shoot further than they can see. Radar, so important, right? So important. Alright, back in the middle, though, it is Old Banana Smoothies trying to get some work done here, trying to do a bit of a pushback, but running into some T2PD of. Ah, uh, it's fine, it's only the one, but it is the two commanders that are lurching around here that are really causing the problems, and he needs to try and do something with that. T2PD going down to support him if he decides to run away, he's got something to run into. Plenty of damage to go down there. Up this direction, more Ilshivas over on, on here, but uh, E3 decided to move on up. He has a tech launcher upgrade on his back. He can start using that to lob missiles at, well, anything. As you can see, he's doing it, and those missiles are going on in. Stealth doesn't work if you've been scouted. Not too useful there, and now there's T2 Adi back here from Sirtrum doing some damage on that front. Back down here though, everything's going on. We have, well, it is Banana Smoothie, still with that upgrade. Still just trying to maybe lure these guys out of position into some damage. There's still a T2 PD over here, uh, but that's Lefouk having a grand old time, basically ignoring them. Let's have the shield on his comp, plenty of health, plenty of ranks of veterans, so he'll even regen health pretty darn good. Okay. Okay, no. Banana Smoothie decides he does not want to gamble on this. There's three commanders here now. Trying to move up with his comm would be tantamount to suicide. Even if he can draw them back into the T2PD range, he would just take far, far too much damage. Alright, what's over here? We have a T3 land shift just about to complete for Ute. We have T3 air. Yes, we do. That is on the playing field as well. We have T3 land out here from. E3, yep, T3 land is indeed, and he's popping out those nasty little sniper bots. Zero's got a siege tank up this way, I saw. There it is. It's going to be able to carve its way through all of this. And at the moment, it is Combat Striker having problems of the artillery kind. That is Sir Trallin doing exactly that. And what kind of range do those have? Empty. This entire section is just under control. In this direction, and. I will say goodbye to the transport, but the transport has already dropped its payload. Only a bunch of engineers, nothing really to be concerned about. But there's a lot of point of being on the way here from Banana Smoothie. Don't want to deal with that. Where is... There we go. 
Seastar is on the way back. He is starting to vacate the area, which he definitely has to. There's some uh, wolf who's wandering around. They'll take time to kill him. And there is some air presence from Mr. Lefouka keeping things under tabs. All right, here we go. This is Kaiser Group starting to push on up. And oh, he's got Nano. And the region is pretty darn quickly looking at that, especially as he gets ranks of units against all of these units. Just look around the edges and you can tank that for a while and be absolutely fine. So banana speed might try and disabuse him of that notion. A bad, bad day here. Right, in this section it is E3 still loving his missiles out. There's a sizable force in front of him defending from the roving units of Ute. It is T2, but it's not going to be enough to slow things down. Up this direction, well, the siege tank died from something. Maybe the T1PD, I am not sure, but there's T1, T1 RT in this mix, along with some units on there and the sniper bot. Okay. Things have just gone from bad to worse. Now then, this is Kaizuku being shushed away, shooed away by Banana Smoothie. Smoothie says, I don't like you, would you please leave? Yes. Although Banana Smoothie is not foolish enough to try and overextend on there, he is paying attention to things like this. So two commanders is a wee bit much for him, and plus all these units coming in, and Smoothie needs to think about falling back now to his extra T2 wind defense over here. He's going to need it. The rest of the map is not too much happening, just the very, very slow push up here. A sniper bot gets caught out by a Nilshiva, and the sniper bot defends itself, and Nilshiva does all the dead thing. Smoothie no, Smoothie no, Smoothie for the back. This is now all on threat. Three commanders pushing down on this little base here, and there's not much he can do about it. It's just himself with some T2 units, and they're going to get absolutely mutilated trying to take care of anything that is down there. Three commanders with support units, got some shield, and got some offerings in the mix as well, so Banana Smoothie really wants to fall back now. So these, plus the commander, Plus the shielding is going to have a bad day. That is even a T3 mobile shield. It's going to take a very long time to get that down. And just as well, he has a bunch of helmets there. That's enough, I think. I don't think he quite has enough T2 PD. And that is a T2 ID? Yes, DD. Good enough, that is on the way. Uh, the Zwapu Noob decides to pull back. Thinks, yeah, okay, maybe there's just a two, you too many T2 point defense. Yeah, but mission accomplished down here, this base is no more. Nothing left of that lot. Okay. What's that? That's T2 ID shells from over there, so no dramas on that front. My oh my, it has been a wrecking ball of pain and destruction down here. Ooh, strats! Ooh, no! Greg gets a single pass onto Mr. Banana Smoothie, but there's plenty of ASFs in the area and it only gets the one pass. He is down to 5,000, half thousand health though. That is absolutely going to hurt. He doesn't want to try and deal with that much longer. Where's he going? 6,000 health and he's walking forward into sniper bots, gun comms, shields, t 2 id What is he doing? What is he doing? Okay, we don't know. You want bombers on the way, they're going to spread their wings and just kill stuff down here. I think it was trying to stop the reclaim that's going on. Indeed, T1 bombers trying to do their trick. But down in this direction, there's plenty of T2PD hiding in the way. Surely they know us there. Well, they do know us there. Do these, this team have radar? No, they don't. So they've got no idea that that's coming. But hello! Ute has not been inactive. He's built a monkey lord. Which is now ready to go. And this has determined it is time for these guys to retreat. So they must be aware the Monk Lord is done. They probably scouted it. I saw in the chat that they have seen the Monk Lord and another strike comes in over gets killed. But it is time to leave and indeed Zwaffle and Kaizuku have determined it is best to not be here. Still no radar down here. Even a T1 radar would just give the extra range for these point points under shield and could do some extra damage to Kaiser Group. But uh, no, this is fine. This is all about to be cleaned out though. There's very little in the way of items to stop that. And the monkey is going to be all well and good for that front. Okay, what is the counter though? 
Bunch of sniper bots. Sniper bots will do the trick. Uh, your own monkey would do the trick. A Yathota would do the trick. But none of that looks like it's being built anywhere. I am not seeing any experimentals for team number two. But just more eco. Well, there's Waffle Noobsies making a wasser. <laughs> okay. So he's going to finish that, and boy does he have the build power. A bunch of T3 engineers here, and they're going to start on a wasser, which is going to be a massive issue for team number one. They do not have air. Monkey has turned up, and it is now killing time. It's going to start that face, that, that pointy laser of doom any second now, and things are going to start dying. Because that's what monkeys do. Especially against lower tech stuff. They're just absolutely white. If they get broad sweeps. Well, that's curious. They're building the wasps, but I don't think they've got air. And look at all the T1 bombs going off over this direction. Those shields are about to drop, and those sniper bots are about to take a bunch of damage. Oh, that shield is pretty darn good. There is some flak down here. I'm pretty sure I can hear it. No, that's all T1, and these sniper bots are about to get absolutely brutalized by the swarm of T1 bombs over here. To look at them go. Plenty of death and destruction there. And just for the sake of a couple of flak, that will make life very different on that top section. Monkey continue to push up this way, going through the middle, because why not? Ignore all of that, but it's going to run into quite a bit over here. A bunch of sniper bots. If they can get a radar readout on the monkey instead of just flying over, then they can start actually popping some extra damage. What kind of range they have. But they're just about in range, and they want to. They are moving forward to try and do a bit of sniper bot snipiness. So the destruction of those factories means it's bad times and now the snipers are in range of its forward little guns and they do damage and it is a gradual kill on these guys gradual but yeah not great then come strats and then come a lot of strats sea star uh, so the eight. i thought it looked like a few more than those but they're going to drop their bombs onto the monkey going to cause a bunch of damage look at the health just disappear on that but the monkey is going to get bored enough to kill off a couple more sniper boss, perhaps? No, he's going to run into all of these. And it's going to be a bad day. 10,000 health. Now turning into some Othams. And those Othams are basically going to tear it a new one. And the strats is still watering, of course. So goodbye, monkey. Goodbye, monkey. In come the ASFs from Ute. Maybe a bit too late. Those strats are absolutely carved up out of the sky, though. So there goes any kind of sniper ability that Team 2 might have had with those. Air is firmly in control of Team Number 1. And hello, is this Seraton in trouble? Swarms of T1 bombers just throw out a couple of flags and they would have a grand old time going for the shield generators first. Kill the shield gens off, then go for the commander or the power sitting beside him. He's going to have a bad time, but the flak is now up and those T1 bombers are going to have a grand old time of dying. Bombs away. What are they going for? I don't know. There was something there, perhaps? Unsure, but either way, those T1 bombers are now basically defunct. They might, if they're lucky, get one bomb off, although, judging from what's going on there, no, they won't, and it's even Sam's up, so. Ineffective T1 bombers are ineffective. Wasser is done for Zwaffle Noobs, so that is up and ready to go. There are. Uh, he's building a massive grid all at once. Pick a generator. Just just do one of them. Just pick a generator. Uh, let's see what we got. We have banana smoothie still loading up the front section of the area. We still have units coming out from this factory that was never killed off by the monkey. So there's some T1 bombers loading around. They can do the job. Maybe they can kill off all of that. Why not? Okay. Hello. Speaking of experimentals, an Anna Smoothie makes his own. Here is a chicken ready to wander, and... You know, if I had to bet between chicken or all of this, I might actually put money on all of this. If they can get the shields up. If they let the shields drop, that's a different story. Because then the chicken can just outright murderify all of us. But uh, when the shields are up... That chicken will have a tough time trying to dislodge all of this. You've got some sniper boss back here, quite a good handful of them. You've got a bunch of Othams. That 
would be well, maybe disastrous. So E3 has built an experimental what's he done? Well he's seraphim, why am I asking? He's built a chicken or an awasa. In this case it's a chicken. Yeah, has that up and ready to go. T1 bombers still doing their thing. It's a lot of T1 bombers for not a lot of gain, I don't think. But we said that, maybe they were going maybe they were just extras from beforehand. No, still producing. Still producing T1 bombers and the spam is real. Look at these units, they have no AA with them at all, which means they're going to have a terrible time. All these bombers are attacking the same units, aren't they? No shift G. Here we go. Bombs ahoy, and they're going to start doing their thing. Nice little bit of spread bomb there. Drop bombs bit by bit. There we go. Chicken is up. Chicken is firing, and these guys decide to move away. Curious decision. I really think he's got enough there, especially under the shields, to take care of that. It's additionally, one of the sniper bots, I think he's got enough to take it on. Although, I haven't looked at the raw fire bar coming out from that. Maybe not. That is a lot of damage, especially from the wall of doom as well as arm cannon. Ah, okay. But even as he took those down, it's down a huge chunk of health. And a smoothie has built an experimental. It's a grab. He's got a chicken down here, he's got a crab up there, looks like it was donated over from Ute. And he's oh, just getting a T3 shield gene at the moment. So no extra experimental just yet. Got that. There we go, dead. Good. Thank you. Three commanders down in the water here. This is Seastar, Isaku, and Lefou, because they're all taking refuge in the water down there. Torpedo bombers and of course team. Maybe they're not thinking there's something there. Maybe they do, maybe they just don't care. Maybe their attention is focused elsewhere with other things, although there is a torpedo bomber. We'll start doing some damage over that front, but there's a massive army pushing through here. T1 bomber spam is real on the base and attack launchers. Maybe they're just lobbing their missiles directly down here, trying to take care of shields, anything and everything. Although the tech missiles are carrying on past, are they going over this way? Are they going? No, surely they're not going for Seratron, they're not going to make it. There's TMD right there, and he's under shields, he's going to be absolutely fine. No problems on that front, but there's a GC and the chicken. So that's the chicken from Mr. E3 and the GC from Sotralan. And those are ready to move on up and start causing havoc along with these units. Bit of a standoff, ready to go. Titan moves on and only to be obliterated. That's not a place you want to be. Not a place you want to be. Okay, what can they do against these two? The answer is not much. They do have a pair of experiments down here, however, the chicken and the crab are ready to engage this large army. We'll see what kind of damage they can do from that front, but this is a problem. Up the top side, chicken and the chicken and the GC. And T1 bombers get just zorched before they can even drop off their payload by lightning tanks. Lightning tanks are, yeah, the most effective mobile AA. It's the instant has and the area damage as well. They are absolutely brutal. They will kill things off in a very rapid fashion. Trying desperately to get a fat boy up, and a fat boy would be good, it would help defend but now the reclaimers order on because he thinks he needs to build something else now and sending in a wave of t2 units under shields to take on a gc and the athota even without the supporting armies with them that is a terrible idea I'm never going to get anything done and it's all just doomed okay well, look at you finish an experimental what has he finished I didn't start. there we go. He's finished a crab and none too soon. That can start walking his way up here and tr needs to assist all of that. Needs to finish that up at the same time. If we can get the Athosa and the crab to pincer this lot, it could be a good decision. Uh, the reclaim was done on the Fabway and the mass sent over to try and finish off the Athosa, which is exactly what he needs. Strats are coming in from the Fook though. They are having to go in a here. The Awasa dropping a bomb on the crab as he would. The strats are going for 
Well, they went for Comrade Striker, who dodges quite happily, and the Athota is very close to finishing there. That's going to have a grand old time. Crab turns up and starts hammering into these forces from the side. Just keeps on moving. Thota is just about done, and it's going to be a close one. The Crab could be the tipping points in favour, though. There's some T2PD and T3 over this way, lobbing the shells in. The, I hear the Awas is going off, and yes, indeed, they are going for the Crab. And the chicken, the extra damage from the Awasa, nothing they can do, and a second Awasa, so two of those, and now a nuke! Who has a nuke? There it is. Nuke out from the Fook, and where is that going for? It is going... Looks like it's going over this way. Is there any kind of SMD? No, there isn't. There's a nuke launcher of his own. So Banana Smoothie had put his own nuke launcher, but it's not going to get to fire. It is going to encounter its own nuclear. Crab is absolutely surrounded now. It is doomed out of history. Yothota is running away, but it's not going to matter. And Banana Smooth control case before the nuke can even land. That's a rude. And what's going on here? Well, this is everything destroyed. The GC and the Yothota did all the damage. This Yothota pushed on out. Maybe it would have been better to stand still under the shields and, do, and throw some extra rounds into the direction of the incoming, but instead strode out and died in the midst of nowhere. Down goes Comrade Striker. GC picks him up, and now it is just down to Ute, all by his lonesome. Trying to build another crab, uh, but, um, oh, is that a control K bomb? It is. Kaboom.